joy and the pain I'm making them yours Things in the past Things yet unseen Wishes and dreams that are yet to come true All of my hopes, all of my plans My heart and my hands are lifted to you Shall we all stand for the prayer? We will continue to pray for the prayer. Amen. Sargastha Pidavi, I am going to pray for you. 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 In the in the young or some side can bring a doctor, check up just right name, sister mini, the caring like El Picino, where a Raja take or a conduboy, Palakaringlum, Chay the Quanta Conum, Yang the Hospital, Matulor Quando, Ada Iger, my Tiruanta Conum, the Um, our Vuicha, with Angle Kai, Nani, Vinimula, Samem, Yan, our Calcate, Kilkan the Kiring like a hitch, other Matulor Quindi, Prayogen of Pritwan, Yang the Jew, the young less a hike in a man, Pratikino. Prarthana Gita Nain Nandi, Eishya Krishna Nanda Dhamatrita Nai. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome. Our lives can be more resplendent. 
how can we look towards abundant living for ourselves, our people, our patients, and our community? So you have to visualize yourself as leaders, especially all of you working in believers should remember that we are a privileged lot. We are a people who have been given more by God, and it is our duty to our own people, to our families, and to the community around to teach them that there is something more than politics and movies. That life is, doesn't end with a lot of reading the newspaper from the first page to the last page, and then settling down, doing nothing during the day. This man sitting in front here is a noble example of what life at, uh, I won't mention the age, should be. Saturday night, he was here all night. Last night before, he was here all night. And then he comes running up four floors when people one-third his age are struggling to keep up with him. So life can be much more meaningful, abundant, and as, as I said, resplendent. You'll have to look up that word. <clears throat> because abundant living is about giving so much of ourselves. So as a part of this, um, as I keep telling you, believers is not ready to accept the mundane, the ordinary. Because in doing that, we allow ourselves to just rot. And you also allow the community around us to accept mediocrity. We are looking for excellence. We actually seek perfection, but perfection, as you know, is possible only with God. Therefore, in seeking perfection, we look for excellence in all fields, in everything that you do. I think we need to start asking ourselves, are we really doing the very best because we are created in God's image and my work is for a king? Therefore, what God wants us to do is what we are trying to do. So that's where Dr. Girija comes in making those beautiful pictures and saying, teaching us so many beautiful things. And we look up to her for leadership in such areas. <clears throat> in several top institutions in the world, the moment you finish your basic training, and particularly after you finish your postgraduate training, you look for what next. And what next doesn't mean to buy a big house and to buy the big car and to become rich. It is to see how can we contribute more to society? How can we give more of ourselves to society? So that's something that we've been thinking about, and that is when, thanks to Dr. Epen's wife, Shanti, who is unwell now, we need to pray for her in Amrita, her brother came up with a proposal that there is, in Europe, they are all looking at internal, internationalization. This immersive, I just got it only this morning. So they came with a proposal, we want to tie up with an institution in the developing world. So we want to learn from you, and you can learn from us. So you must remember that when you go for a holiday to a new place, you only see the beauty, the external beauty. If you want to know something more, I'm talking so that I can get some more people in, because you'll miss the first few slides are very important. So it's only when you live with people that you get to learn more about culture, more about values, more about beautiful things in life. So that is internationalization. So we were invited by a particular university you'll hear about in Europe to be partners with them. So the rest is history. This happened four years ago. Five years add to the presence as she speaks. And of course, the ever enthusiastic Jacob Jesuran, they both were invited and they went over spent time there and did a lot of beautiful things. Would you believe that when they left, two of their top leaders wept, saying that this is the love that we seek. We don't have it here in Europe. 
Can you give us a little more of that? So over to Mini Sarah Thomas and Jacob Jesper, and we'll put our hands together and welcome them. Good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you, sir, for that uh, warm introductory speech. It's indeed a great privilege to be here among all uh, of the Believers Church Medical College Hospital family. And it was a great privilege in both Jacob's life and my life uh, that God chose us and sent us uh, to this beautiful place uh, to see, learn, and gain a lot of experience um, to see what uh, people do in the other part of the world, uh, what they do differently, and if we are in par with them or even superior than them in certain aspects. And it was a great learning uh, experience for us, uh, both uh, culturally, um, um, subject-wise, um, healthcare-wise. So there was a lot of ideas, a lot of thoughts that uh, it came into our mind when we saw different things that was being done over there. And as Sir very rightly said, globalization and internationalization are the key words in the European community. They um, give a lot of emphasis for both these um, uh, factors, be it um, economy, be it uh, industry, be it healthcare, be it education. Um, they are into it. They believe that there are difference in uh, looking at or approaching uh, different aspects of our daily living in different parts of the world. In the US, it might be technology. In China, it might be their traditional medicine and practices. In India, it might be Ayurveda and spiritual practices. They want a holistic approach to their patient care. So they believe that even during their academic uh, sessions, their students should be sent to other parts of the world to see what happens, give them a learning experience so that they can look at patients as a whole. So this was our uh, initial uh, uh, reason uh, why, um, as uh, Sir said, uh, we call uh, Mr. Varki Varkitchen. Uh, he came to our hospital and he found that our hospital is, is almost par with or in par with the Western world, the European world. And he felt that, yes, we are uh, good enough or better enough to be um, partners with the European community. Hence, he, he's a person, he's a very eminent person, he's a professor, he goes all around the world, uh, he goes um, all over the globe uh, speaking about economy, globalization, and industrialization. Um, so uh, in his assessment, we were very good, and uh, this proposal of a partnership was commenced with um, the Karlstad University in Sweden, and um, um, things worked out very well. We had them coming and visiting us a couple of times. Their um, uh, department of uh, globalization and uh, internationalization, uh, the heads of department came here twice. They, they assessed uh, our uh, work here, the hospital, the institution as a whole. And then we have already had the privilege of training three batches of their students, nursing students here. And a uh, during the COVID period, we also uh, helped for a research project, uh, online research project uh, for the students. The last batch of uh, students, couple of them, Naimo and Haven came here. Um, and uh, they were here during the ONM season. They were here for uh, um, entire two months. Um, and uh, their research project, uh, I must tell you, won the highest marks when they went back and presented it. Uh, they have graduated now, and uh, so following that, they wanted the Believers Church representatives to go to Kalsta and see what they do there, 
uh, to discuss in detail about the proposals. Uh, all of us must be familiar with the word Erasmus program. So what we did mainly was to work on a proposal. Uh, we'll talk more about it as the slides go, as we go forward in the presentation. So with uh, this journey in mind, dream in mind, uh, Jacob and I uh, set on this venture. Uh, we traveled from the uh, Cochin International Airport. Uh, we traveled to Dubai. And it was in Dubai that uh, we met uh, Varkichin. Uh, he traveled, he settled in, Cape, uh, in um, South Africa. And he joined us there. And uh, uh, believe me, it was, barely, it was a big rush from one uh, terminal to the other. The, we barely had an hour before we caught the next flight, boarded the next flight to Stockholm. That is Jacob's um, lunch that he, uh, he sumptuously enjoyed. And uh, there, uh, a seven hour flight from Dubai, we landed in Stockholm. And uh, it was full of, uh, we were full of excitement uh, and energy and gusto as we uh, and uh, landed there uh, in Stockholm. Uh, we had to go down uh, to the tube station in the airport itself um, and catch the tube to the capital city, uh, Stockholm. Now I invite my friend uh, Jacob to continue. It's always better to be like David. Never choose new, new tools when you do something. So better to go with this mic. So, <clears throat> so we go down, we reach the airport and go down two levels in an escalator through a cave system which was fascinating and we reach at a tube train station. So they in Europe are well collect connected with uh, public transport. We do not require a car, though there are a lot of uh, cars there, but public transport is given uh, prime importance. So this was magic unfolding as we reached the city of Stockholm. It was a beautiful city and as we got down our station, we just couldn't wait for more. And we reached Gamla Stan, which was our final station, and then we got down and we were put right at the center of old city of Stockholm with all cobbled pathways, large churches, medieval churches, and beautiful buildings on either side, which are at least 200 to 300 years old. And the way they maintain their heritage and their, and their um, old buildings is quite commendable. So that evening, we got a chance to walk around uh, the entire old city, the beautiful Baltic Sea was just in front of a hotel and this is the uh, connecting canal between the lake of Stockholm and the Baltic Sea and what you see here is the official palace of the King of uh, Sweden. And here we have our three musketeers and this was the person who received us, Dr. Brian, Professor Brian and his hospitality, his energy, his level of you know, attention to detail, to the care of each one of us was astounding. I was always thinking that I was doing a good job at hospitality, but then I realized that I was really bad. The way he treated us was superb. So we took a walk along the cobble pathways. This, was, this on either side is the um, <coughs> corporation building of Stockholm. And then these are multiple narrow alleys between buildings where we can walk through and reach the main road. So again, just showing you the old city of Stockholm. This was a beautiful ice rink where people just come over to, for fellowship. They just move around skating and we were able to watch it again for the first time. And then we ended the day with a sumptuous dinner. Again, the restaurant was chosen and the table was reserved for us and everything happened quite professionally. The next day morning, we came down for beautiful breakfast. The spread was 
quite elaborate we could either choose for healthy or we can choose for greasy mini ma'am chose healthy and i chose greasy and you can it's quite evident from the size transformation so here you go and in all the hotels we had these red hot casseroles where they would serve a hot a hot food the rest were all cold food and um, and what you see on top of that half egg is caviar so i've always heard that caviar is the food of the uh, el el elite but um, it is quite common in uh, sweden so monday morning was a day to explore the city they had planned it that way that we explored the city of stockholm but by god's grace the last 11 months in pharmaco vigilance our department our institution has been the number one in the country and that information had passed on to the upsala monitoring center in sweden which is the world collaborating center for pharmaco vigilance and they handle 265 countries the data of 265 countries so i wrote to them and they invited me over so i skipped the city tour and i traveled to upsala on monday so this was a little story of mine dr brian asks me would you require um uh, clear water or would you require crystal water so i thought crystal is crystal clear okay i'll take crystal water and then when i got on the train i realized both were carbonated waters and i couldn't drink either so i had to uh, go and get another bottle just a little uh, fun fact so this was the uh, world coordinating center we have seen it only in pictures and there i was in flesh and blood and it was quite a beautiful experience it was a high uh, security uh, facility so i couldn't take my camera or uh, phone inside so this was where uh, they took me inside and they showed me all their data storing areas and then i was able to talk with the core team about our best practices at bcmch and how we have consistently been doing more than 300 uh, adr submissions uh, for the past 11 months which is the highest in india followed by pgi chandigarh and uh, <clears throat> the other uh, institutions after the presentation i reached there at 11 and my appointment was at 11:30 i finished at 12 my train back to stockholm was at 2:30 so i had two hours to sneak through the city so i walked through the town and i i just wanted you to run through the beautiful town it's a medieval town and even ancient than that i walked through this beautiful park and as i was walking towards i i wanted to visit the upsala university library so this was a bonus as i walked through the alleys and reached the reached the main road and there was this little hillock on top of which there was this beautiful castle it's called the upsala castle where they have the who meetings and uh, the governor governor's residence etc so this was my next destination the upsala university library where i got to meet a few students linked to the uh, upsala monitoring center an amazing library in itself with multiple layers different floors uh, lakhs and lakhs of books in store and one thing i saw in sweden is that everything looks at home you go to a place you feel like you have to be there you feel like you have to get that immersive experience so hence the hence my title our title again a few more uh, slides of the upsala university library it's called carolina rediviva this was where i was able to sit with the students and have a discussion this was the student cafeteria where they took me my humble meal for the day and there is a specific reason i put this in here people in sweden live for more than 90 years on an average and the reason is that they include a lot of greens and most of them are exotic greens in their food you see here this this looks like a a pachakari shop you know but no it's a meal so i was able to experience that we experienced that day in and day out but i did opt for some greasy stuff and then it was my walk back to the train station when i bumped into this beautiful 12th century edifice it's called the helga trinigets kirka which means holy trinity church a beautiful structure which is still maintained in in its pristine health 
And following that, I reached the Uppsala Cathedral, which is a 15th century structure. Again, a very beautiful structure, one of the uh, key structures in Europe for the reformation of the church. This is the interior. And then I walked back to the station through the uh, municipal building. And these are little buildings which brought me to my childhood. As I read my Tintin, as I read my Enid Blyton, these were the sort of buildings where, you know, I always dreamed to walk through. And here I was in flesh and blood looking at this building, walking through these um, vestibules which were built right under the building. Such a beautiful, amazing thing. And fairy tale Ferris. This river is something which we all have to... Uh, you know, uh, you know, dream of such a beautiful river, crystal clear water. Nobody will throw a paper. Nobody will spit into it. Nobody will sit by, throw, a, you know, litter. They each citizen maintains. I was, I was walking through and through, and people are so ruly. People are so ruly. We have to learn that from them. So this is my walk along the Ferris River. Again, medieval houses, they paint in orange, red, and yellow. Uh, so uh, such beautiful houses and uh, these um, uh, metal bridges are a common sight. So and then I reach my train station back to Stockholm. So beautiful trains, well kept, very neat. People are very welcoming. Uh, and one thing which I saw is that in all public transportation, the driver or the person who is in control of the vehicle is so neatly dressed, so welcoming. He welcomes you at the door and uh, something to learn from and a lot of equality is there being practiced. So I reached back to Stockholm and my fascination with these uh, beautiful trains uh, <coughs> uh, started with the Stockholm uh, station and so amazing uh, double uh, double decker trains and uh, uh, t tube trains and uh, they really have worked on their trains so over to minima uh, when jacob went for his uh, visit to uppsala uh, we had a chance to see the scenic beauty and the monumental um, uh, you know uh, the uh, the beauty there in the cathedrals, the palace, and uh, thoroughly enjoy what was going through. Um, in the evening when he arrived, we were there at the railway station to receive him, and after which we went exploring the, uh, the new Stockholm. That is, the, the, we saw the old city, a bit of the old city earlier, and then this was the new Stockholm. Uh, very beautifully designed, very beautifully planned, uh, very neat, very clean, um, medieval buildings, but uh, very well kept, well maintained. Um, elite uh, taxi cabs, um, and uh, then we reached uh, where we stayed. This is our uh, heavenly abode, as uh, we, we called it. It is the Hayat. It's called the res residence. Huh? What was it called? Raisins, yes, it was the raisins where we stayed. The day was very tiring, and uh, so we had to. Uh, I had to call the day early because uh, uh, it was uh, it was minus thirteen and uh, very very cold and uh, probably my age. So I had to get into bed. But Jacob had yet another beautiful stint uh, over the Baltic Sea. I couldn't rest my legs. So we quickly uh, walked across our hotel and we reached the, this is just public transport. It is not some luxury cruise or anything. It's just a public transport and it is free for the uh, people. So we just took the uh, cruise across the Baltic Sea and we reached um, the whole uh, city limits. And then we came back, and as we came back to the hotel, we hopped into a Swedish eatery. And what you see here is called a, a, a semla, and what you see to the right are um, cinnamon rolls, which they have very frequently. Those are their staple snacks. 
and then a lot of trinket shops across the old old town of uh, Sweden. And this was Sulfikar uncle whom I met uh, in one of the shops. He was so welcoming, Indian, Indian, and he was, uh, you know, giving me a good discount on my trinkets and um, souvenirs. And he is from Pakistan, and he gave me a warm hug and he said, "Whenever you come back to Sweden, you should come home, and I'll prepare a meal for you." So. Going across boundaries, we, lean that, we learn that we are not alone. <clears throat> so we went for dinner at a 16th century restaurant. It was called the Pelican Restaurant. Excellent hospitality, wonderful food, and we really, really enjoyed the whole uh, thing. So we started the next morning, Tuesday. We were traveling to Karlstad. We were starting our travel. Early in the morning, I was able to take a quick walk across the city. And this was the uh, uh, Titus Capit ship, which was parked opposite to our hotel. Beautiful ship. We took a walk along the boulevards, reached the Carolyn Cathedral. And then we got this wonderful view of the entire Stockholm city. And then this slide also I wanted to be very particular about. As I stood there gazing at the Baltic Sea and the Stockholm city, I noticed that the none of the cars were overtaking, breaking lanes, no honking, no rushing, no absolutely no speeding. So that is something which we should all imbibe. And they had a set dedicated lines for bicycles, very much importance given to uh, given to positive health and and also a sustainable uh, uh, environment. And if you walk on the cycling lane, they will become really upset. Uh, and they will just say, what, what, what? we don't understand what they say, but we know that they are upset. So day two, we started to not walk on cycling lanes. So now we are on our way to Kalsta University, which was a four hour by train. And uh, that was our train journey. This is a little Swedish boy um, who was very fascinated, might, might be because we looked different. So he took a liking to me and wanted to sit with me. So that's why we captured it in the picture here. And that's the four of us. That is Brian, uh, Varkichin, and uh, both of us uh, traveling towards Kalsta. In Kalsta, we stayed at uh, a hotel called uh, Clarion. And this is how they welcome us. Uh, it, it was very beautiful. This is the hotel layout. Uh, we went in and uh, changed, and we headed off for Kalsta University. So this is the Kalsta University building, especially the health sciences, uh, building for health sciences. Um, that's Jacob at the entrance, and uh, that's me. Um, what we found there was this little welcome note. Wherever we went, we saw this welcome note, which was very, very touching. And uh, you, you felt wanted. Uh, you felt welcomed there. So this was on the door uh, leading to the, uh, the meetings uh, in the Fika room, as they call it. Fika is the, they have tea every, uh, uh, every day at 10 o'clock. It is mandatory. There is tea time and at uh, 10 in the morning and at 3.30 in the evening. So even on those doors, we found our names written and a welcome, is, which was a very, very personalized, customized, touching gesture. Um, they told us about the university layout. It is there right in front as you enter. And uh, this is uh, an oval uh, auditorium. Um, you, you can see the passage there, and uh, you get in. And uh, the, it's, it's a full-fledged auditorium where they have our lecture hall, as they call it. Uh, it's called the Aula o Ovala. Aula is the auditorium. Um, what you see outside is a LED screen. And uh, when the auditorium is full, and if there is a lecture that needs to be um, seen by others, um, this uh, uh, it, it is portrayed on, or it is uh, uh, shown on the LED screen. And uh, these are staircases uh, just opposite, uh, and the seating arrangement where people can sit outside the auditorium and watch uh, the program or listen to the program. This is the, the department team that heads the um, inter, inter, uh, Department of Globalization and Internationalization. That is Brian, Dr. Kesa, uh, Dr. Helene, and us. 
so it was a very very warm welcome and uh, the, what what jacob said is very true every little thing that was to be done the following day was all recorded charted out and given to us all those papers in front of us is our program for the day uh, including the num the time the time limit the minutes for each program each session was specifically written and it showed how much they had prepared to receive us and take us through uh, during our week there so this was uh, um, they told us what the day ahead would be like and then we had a glimpse into culture university so this sentence the opening slide caught our eye and our attention which says we challenge the known and explore the unknown so um, it it was a very exciting informative uh, um, uh, thought which they left with us after the presentation and uh, many of you especially Anne would uh, uh, remember uh, both Naima and uh, um, Haven and they were our two students who were here and uh, they came over they try they had to travel far they came over and uh, they spent time with us. They uh, had a little presentation about their time here in BCMCH. As I said, Fika is entwined in their culture. Every day in the morning and in the afternoon, Fika is mandatory. And it is not just a time of chatting. They plan for the future. They plan for, they, they do their research uh, meetings, everything during Fika. So Fika is a time of snacking and they are majorly coffee people. So coffee and snack with a lot of planning goes into a Fika. So, as we walked through the university, there were so many student learning corners, something which we should establish as well. In different areas of the hallways, there were these cozy corners where students could just sit and learn very comfortable areas, as you see. And well-appointed classrooms, one best practice which I saw was this screen which was fitted in front of the classroom just for the teacher to not turn back and look at the slide. They can just look at this uh, television as they speak so they can focus on the students more and beautiful dining areas. You feel like you have to go and spend time there. So well appointed and beautiful uh, dining areas. And this was one other slide which, um, one other picture which was really good where they had all these illustrious alumni and their achievements and, and their current positions uh, mentioned. Beautiful hallways, university was quite uh, nicely uh, planned and quite uh, well uh, arranged. <coughs> Uh, this is Ola Magna, the uh, main auditorium where all their main events are um, celebrated. And uh, um, that is Jacob trying to put in a mock lecture over there because the hall is so fascinating. Um, the teacher in him would have pr prompted him to do that. Uh, everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. And this is a, a, a simple solution, an innovation. It's a small um, TV uh, monitor which is on uh, casters which is on wheels which can be rolled in to the uh, dais so that the speaker looks at it directly and speaks and does not have to uh, turn back or uh, you know at the LED screen or the monitor behind uh, lunch again and then uh, this is a uh, they call it the wisdom tree it is all made of crystals and uh, it is suspended. It doesn't touch the flow. So it is. Uh, th this is in the middle of the uh, the college building, the university building. Uh, they have an event called nailing of the thesis uh, of uh, uh, for uh, people who have just completed their thesis, um, and um, that's Jacob nailing himself as the thesis over there. Uh, the central library visit. I think Jacob will take you through. Again, this was the central library. Again, so tastefully made. They give importance to learning corners, as they call it. They, they put on these beautiful carpets and they make these uh, chairs very suitable for a small group learning. And 
a huge collection of books across uh, different um, uh, specialities and uh, and again this learning corner was meraki for us meraki is something which we do soulfully so we sat down and we had a very good discussion on the on the various aspects of the the visit and again a bird's eye view of the library this was another corner where we were able to sit down and then the night we went f to a they took us to a beautiful uh, restaurant a uh, multi course meal was provided for us and that was when snow welcomed us as well at carlston so this was the dinner and uh, this was our after dinner glow <coughs> So come Wednesday it was a very snowy morning and we set out early in the morning we reached the university covered in snow and this was one uh, one right up on the university building that really caught our sights and when we asked about it this was a thought by the founder of the university nobody puts baby in a corner so as they started this university there were a lot of uh, trouble they were pushed to the pushed to the brink of uh, shutting it down there were a lot of trouble and just because they were a fledgling university but then the founder put her foot down and said nobody puts a baby in a corner the baby will shout the baby will cry the baby will come back so today carlstead university is quite a spectacle and they have written it down nobody puts baby in a corner so <clears throat> that's about it and so next is the skills lab visit the skill lab visit was something which was very very nice very very informative um this is especially the nursing uh, skill lab visit that we had um the rooms are set up like hospital rooms um the procedures are done actually um similarly uh, as you would do it in the unit on a patient every aspect of the hospital a miniature of the hospital was there in the skill lab there were areas where students come look at it feel how the hospital would be know every small aspect of the hospital and patient care before they actually went to the hospital and went to be with the patients there were uh, areas where these are the simulation labs where their uh, uh, professors or their tutors could sit they could observe them they could simulate the situations from there and the students could be uh, monitored uh, the beds were as a, the real beds as in the hospital the iv sets everything every setup in the skill lab was identical to the hospital setup uh, we went into the skill lab and we found one of the students had forgotten to uh, turn off the uh, iv pump uh, there and uh, it was a blood transfusion probably that they were planning so uh, they were practicing so there was blood all on the floor when we, so it was by god's grace that we went into the room and uh, we could find it but what i'm trying to say is these are things that could happen in the units which are actually experienced by the students in the unit a uh, mannequins these are the number of mannequins that is there only for the nursing college alone hands on experience uh, discussions case presentations uh, all such practice is done in the uh, skill lab and the student has no fear or the fear is alleviated before the patient student reaches reaches the patient's bedside so next we went to the dental hospital again it was state of the art training center along with the hospital and this was a picture taken by the departmental head and as we walked from the health sciences building to the dental building there was this beautiful garden filled in snow this is the dental block and we went in as we walked through the hallways we we learned from the uh, from the instructors there uh, they 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 told us about their functioning what they have the mannequins that they have the the best practices that they do and here you can see students actively practicing on each other their uh, modules and we had high fidelity dental mannequins as well with motorized uh, devices where they could learn uh, the latest uh, tech so 
<coughs> so this was uh, she was uh, the one who instructed us very happily through the dental hospital and um, tack is thank you in swedish so we said tack and we walked out to white february it was clad in snow and then we attended a thesis nailing ceremony when they defend a thesis now this person in red she's ingrid so so she defended her thesis and when they defend the thesis and successfully f completed they come and nail their thesis onto a wooden board so we were there to uh, to uh, to see it we were the special guests there and then uh, here you see that completed and then we were, we met the dean and also the administrator of the university and we were able to have a good chat with them and um, uh, that's about it so now it was all uh, our turn to showcase our bcmch um, we took turns jacob and i took turns uh, to present uh, the different aspects of BCMCH to the crowd. Um, they were, it was, uh, we were given about 45 minutes, but it took more than an hour because there were a lot of questions that were being asked, a lot of um, uh, discussions between the sessions, and it was uh, a very interesting and exciting uh, uh, time there. Um, there were many practices which they thought uh, we were better off than them and uh, we were appreciated for that. So um, again, uh, within ourselves, our confidence was uh, much high after we presented because we felt proud, we felt that we are on the right track. And uh, that was a word of encouragement for what we are doing here. Um, that is Jacob presenting the, um, the medical college and uh, medic the activities there. Uh, we had the students who are graduating uh, and uh, they were leaving for South Africa the following day for their um, student exchange program, after which they would come back and uh, get their graduation. Um, there were questions asked, there were doubts, there were discussions both from the students and among the faculty and the members. Um, it was a very, um, uh, you know, when you talk to the students, their doubts, their uh, apprehensions uh, were so clear and uh, they were so excited to go and uh, um, uh, be uh, in this new place. So they, uh, they, the need or their uh, love or their wish to be in India was also mentioned uh, often. Um, the older students who went to South Africa also was there and they also shared their experiences. It was a good learning experience both for them and for us. So after which we had a dinner, and this dinner was very special because each of the faculty cooked uh, uh, their special dish for us. They came to us and they explained what each dish was. So what again I'm telling you is the hospitality that we experienced. They went out of their way to be uh, you know, welcoming and they did everything within their capacity to make us feel at home. After uh, the um, uh, dinner session, uh, what we had was um, uh, there was an exchange of uh, token of love and comradeship. Uh, what you see is uh, Dr. Brian pinning the Carlston University uh, badge or the pin onto each one of our labels. So it was it was a very touching experience. Uh, they wanted us to feel at home truly. Um, it was uh, a beautiful experience for us. Uh, Thursday morning, we went to the central hospital for a visit, and that is Dr. Anna taking us to uh, the central hospital. This is the basement parking where we enter. We were greeted by the Reverend, uh, Reverend Johnson, uh, who took us uh, showed us the chapel and the spiritual aspect uh, of the uh, Kalsta University to the patients coming there. Um, patients of all religion uh, could go in there and spend time uh, in prayer. These are the different uh, departments that we visited and we passed by. If you read the first three words, uh, three letters in those words, you can speak Swedish. You will understand the language. That is the gynecology oncology department there. and. Uh, the, 
this is the oncology team, the expert oncology team that we sat with and spent time with. Uh, if you see their uniforms, they all wear the same kind of uh, same uh, uniform. Uh, it is the name pin or the badge that by which we know who they are. The lady sitting there in the center is the senior consultant of the unit, and the other two are the nurses, senior nurses in the unit. Um, so we, they spoke to us about the functioning of their department. Oncology department there is one of the busiest units and it is a very huge unit. This is the daycare facility of the unit. They have beds and recliners to take care of patients. Um, the team in the daycare unit and in the OPD met us. Uh, they welcomed us. This is the uh, oncology ward where we went. This is an uh, OPD consultation room of the oncologist. These are the general layout of the wards there and the daycare there. There are places like this uh, adjacent to each of the wards where the patients and their relatives and the bystanders can sit and uh, you know have uh, a chat. Uh, they don't need to crowd the units during the visiting hours. Um, they can have their tea, they can talk to each other. Even counseling patients is done in this area. These are some of the uh, patient assistant commodities that we saw. Uh, these are wheelchairs, uh, which are, uh, you know, um, battery operated. Um, there are um, a lot of patient hoists in the unit, which helps the nurses uh, move patients. Uh, this is the isolation unit. Um, if you notice, there is a well-defined anteroom. Um, there is, uh, you know, you can witness without going inside. Um, the, um, and uh, at the other end, the far end of the room, you can see it's a door that opens out into the garden. So isolation rooms are done in such a way that patients um, in the rooms are in blend with the nature. These are trolleys which the nurses uh, and the nursing assistants take a complete trolley to do the bed making. Um, um, these are uh, digital, uh, um, these are, uh, you know, what we have in India, it's called the PIXIS in India. These are uh, for patient safety, medication administration. Um, each time you open one of those drawers, you have to sign in and sign out. So chances of medication errors, uh, timely medication, all this can be monitored. Uh, so it's a very safe practice for medication administration. These are rooms where nurses can have their, these are uh, nurses' duty rooms where they can come, they can relax, they can write their notes, they can uh, have their coffee in between work. This is a head nurse's room or a nurse's duty room. Uh, what you can see is that window over there. So while they are documenting, documentation is all paper free. Uh, it is, um, there, it's a paperless area. And uh, you, uh, it's all uh, online or uh, you know, uh, digital recording. And uh, while they are doing that, uh, if they need to be away from the patient, they can still keep an eye on the patient because of the, uh, through from the nurse's duty room. Uh, this is a senior consultant in um, oncology department. Both of them are consultants there, and that senior nurse who was very welcoming, and they took us around the units, uh, showed us the entire area. This is something very interesting. This is a, um, a what do you call a small scooty, uh, the uh, transport system within the hospital, especially for the support staff. You see the little basket, they, col they collect all the blood work up, all the lab samples, and they get onto that, and they don't have to walk till the lab. They can just ride on it. So, and they can park it in the near, there are s parking areas, so they, uh, they don't actually waste time. We didn't see a pneumatic chute there, so they still use this, so probably this is an easy method for them. Uh, this is the anteroom that I was talking about. I took these pictures specifically because our isolation wards can be designed uh, this way, um, and whatever be our facility now, we can imbibe ideas from here and uh, use them. Um, uh, modify our areas. Um, these are for patient, um, uh, as I said, you can look at your patient, you can see the patient through those glass uh, uh, windows, and uh, for patient privacy, you can put those blinds down when not in use. A janitor's um, trolley is what you see. Um, for infection control nurses, you would like this. These are, um, you know, how you um, put in the notifications outside the door for patients with MRSA or any of those caution boards. 
Uh, there is a central monitoring in almost all the wards. You can. This was an oncology ward, so you can see the vital signs and you know um, uh, all the patient uh, parameters at the nurse station, um, and can be seen both by the doctors or the healthcare worker over there. These are other patient care devices. Uh, what you see on the, uh, in the, in the front here is a, a patient's walker, which is also battery operated. Um, the little uh, bench there that you can see, a seat there you can see is patient can keep there. A patient who needs a walker can keep his belongings there. Uh, if he's having a cup of tea, he can leave the cup of tea there and still uh, go safely uh, using the mechanized walker. These are the linen rooms. And something that uh, is very nice is this board over there, where you can see uh, these are all the policies that need to be followed, um, which is written up and put in those colored uh, flip boards over there. So for a newcomer in the unit or anybody in doubt, they don't need to go and open books or files. It is all available over there. Uh, this is uh, uh, considering the the temperature the the and uh, how cold the area is uh, these are wheelchairs which are warm which can be the seat is warm uh, the the patient when they sit on, on these wheelchairs they don't uh, they don't feel cold it is not metal it is rubber and it keeps them warm so that is it and uh, from here uh, we leave the unit um, This is something which was really heartwarming after a hospital visit. Our coordinator, Dr. Anna, went over to each of the people who demonstrated or took us around and gave them little gifts. And look at the face of that person, right? So none of them are taken for granted. And they were just taking us around, showing us. But then she made it a point to go back. She's from the university, the one on the <coughs> sweat jacket. So she took, she took it a point to go and meet each one of them and thank them and give them a small gift. So that was a beautiful gesture. So that day we quickly went to Dr. Anna's home. It was a breezy visit and their house was built. They built it by themselves, the husband and wife together. They painstakingly built it for, the, for, for two years and it was at the edge of the fourth largest lake of Europe. It was just the edge of the earth feeling, a beautiful house and you have to travel to believe. So this was the picture. It was a quick visit and then the evening we went to visit Arvika, Professor Brian's place, again a dreamy uh, town. So this was the road to the town and uh, transforming landscapes. It was, uh, you know, uh, alternating between snow and uh, green as per the um, uh, temperature in the different areas. It was a one hour drive and this was the Arvika church. Every town there has a church at the center and the town built around it. <coughs> again, we stopped for a uh, uh, little snack and then for dinner we went to Dr. Brian's residence which is a beautiful beautiful house nestled in the woods and hospitality was personified he put us on the couch he gave us a little warmer for us to warm up and then again uh, the discussion was about the research proposal which we were going to do the next day and then uh, dinner. He made the dinner. He prepared the dinner for us. He bought the best salmon uh, fish from the market, brought it, he cooked it, uh, and the exotic vegetables as a salad, and amazing dinner it was. Again, love. It was, it was love being shared without any measure. So, uh, something which um, I had to learn. So, come Friday, uh, it was a day for our research proposal. That was one of the major pillars of the visit. We had to write a Erasmus Plus project for the next three years for student mobility, faculty mobility, uh, joint research and all. So this is a practice which they do. When they have planned something big, when they plan an academic event, when they plan a research activity, they transfer the entire team to an experiential uh, place. So this is where they took us, Luca Brunn. So this is a resort nestled in the woods. There are two large lakes on either side, which were all completely frozen. And this is the resort at the center. So <clears throat> this was there we were. And there was fully um, snow everywhere. 
everywhere there was snow and we were thrilled and we were waiting and the room that you see behind the light green color that was where we were going to brainstorm the next one and a half days over to minima um george jandi sir this uh, time when we went away uh, i was uh, reminded of how you had to you left this place uh, and went to velor and uh, stayed there till you got a vision statement so that's exactly what they did. they went away from the you know we had uh, that is the practice there anything important a group of people move away from the daily chores and uh, the uh, work there and they are at peace and they work on the proposal or whatever they are committed to so this is a beautiful place and here how we have our uh, street dogs and uh, cows and uh, all around us we see beautiful deer there can you see them in the background there are three of them so they come out at certain times of the day and uh, they are there you know um, uh, they are good and they are bad because they eat up all their vegetables and things like that but they it, it's a beautiful sight to see them brainstorming uh, sessions they started in the morning we don't even take our mobiles there what we do is we sit there um the entire proposal we discussed uh, we had to write it and rewrite it um there was a lot of discussions and uh, this is for a period of 3 uh, years as jacob said um this proposal has been uh, uh, sent to erasmus we are waiting for the reply this is for both student and staff exchange program uh, between bcmch and the kalsta university so this is the room that we spent uh, almost uh, one and a half days in and uh, we get short breaks in between as i said at 10 o'clock and at 3:30 and then for dinner this is a church next to the resort uh, this is a well that is closed it's it's a frozen well now and uh, this is the church a very beautiful church and uh, what you see on the seats are uh, um, the the moose skin uh, which is uh, like a you know it to keep it warm uh, more than warm it looks very very beautiful and cozy and uh, this is us uh, as a team there and if you see the statue at the back over there of jesus christ it's the same one that we have in our center courtyard christus consolator uh, this is a spring that is in the church it is uh, um, it's well developed the spring is uh, um Uh, it's a natural spring and uh, so we wanted to give a group a name for our group when we start a whatsapp group and uh, for communication so at the spring we called ourselves the the spring group so that is how the the whatsapp group is named and that's how we stay connected till date um it was a beautiful experience and then when we indians go anywhere we like to uh, transfer our culture and our traditions there so that is helen in a sari it took uh, almost an hour to get her <laughs> dressed up in a sari but it was a malayali evening all of us were in uh, indian costumes and uh, this was a time of uh, love from sharing our love from bcmch we had little gifts for them uh, which we shared with them and that's a little shawl that we gave them that is brian uh, kaisa um, anna and uh, workitchen um so we all looked malayalis that is jacob in the munda worki in his uh, indian costume and the headgear so it was a very very beautiful evening they were all in their salwars and believe me we didn't take any of those dresses with us they had it all they were ready for us so and then we had a beautiful uh, uh, evening uh, dinner and uh, the following day again we had some time uh, spent until midday with uh, the proposal and uh, then over to check on saturday after the 2 hour discussion session we finalized and crystallized our proposal and then we left lokabron enlightened so we reached the town of upsala we were going for the airport the next day and we had to stay at the upsala town and we were welcomed by this beautiful site of this upsala cathedral and then we had dinner with family i had a cousin who was staying at a nearby town he is a radiologist so he came over and we had dinner together and on sunday when we looked out of our window this was the site so such a beautiful town and then we left for the airport as we drove 
uh, we reached the airport and it was snowing heavily and all that i could hear was mini sara you are an inspiration so there was a long parting hug something which i experienced with uh, it was totally new for me you know when when they part they hug you and they keep patting your back and they tell good things about you mini sara it was a wonderful week with you it was so loving you are such an amazing person the things you have done you great friend that i've got and, and you know she went on and on it was like for 2 3 minutes i was like oh my god and you know both of them were in tears and stuff and so the long parting hug okay so until next time so it was a beautiful experience so i would like to share the outputs of this trip this is our trip in a nutshell so global recognition for bcmch wherever we went we were able to uh, showcase our institution for us the faculty it was internationalization at best and they officially declared as their international visiting faculties which was a great pride for us and the fresh erasmus project which which includes a huge grant and also 45 days faculty mobility for us um, involved in the project is on the anvil waiting for approval again a big thing links to other universities established as we visited the central hospital in karlstad we met the oncology team and the oncology team the doctor you saw in those pictures she is from the oribro medical school so i was able to talk to her and she was excited about the prospect of collaboration to bring in medical students from there for an exchange because europe is a hot spot for tropical diseases learning tropical diseases they are already exploring africa and malaysia and indonesia are already cashing in on it european students are traveling every time and india is still in in its infancy so we have this great opportunity to cash in on it transcultural en- encounter and perspective transformation really 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 these people in sweden they are so very well behaved well kept they they m- they maintain the en- environment every single bit attention to detail they give importance to time to its second and everything is done so meticulously and they are serious about everything okay and personalized care that they gave us every time we were driven around by a faculty by a professor uh, even when we went to the airport we were driven by the husband by by the head of the department's husband she is the head of the entire health sciences department her husband he is a bishop bishop bengt so he is uh, more than 70 years old so he drove all the way he he picked us up and dropped us at the airport so no there was no space for anything that was delegated everything was done within their uh, capacity and they did it so beautifully so that was the transcultural encounter that we got and when our perspectives got transformed and we were able to imbibe best practices and also infuse best practices as we spoke about nursing excellence as we spoke about our inspire program as we spoke about the impact program as we spoke about shp program i could see bright eyes and they were all questions they were they were bombarding us with questions so they wanted such practices to be uh, to be incorporated in their curriculum too and that is where globalization of curriculum comes into picture so this is another major major goals in um, <clears throat> in in globalization and internationalization and that is another major output of the trip and of course relationships forged for life take home message travel to explore travel to engage internationalization is a hot commodity what do i have it in with you if meeda is asking from there sir what do i have it in me if ranji is asking me internalization internationalization is a hot commodity Intern- internalize it in your departments and especially in european universities you just have to open your door open the open the department of surgery to european students and they are going to flow in because they want to learn from the tropical countries from the asian subcontinent and inter- intercultural exposure is a must this is a time of war this is a time where people are becoming more and more hyper nationalistic people are living in silos and we need to break those boundaries we need to become a global citizen everybody every nation there are good people and we have to become one and for that intercultural exposure is a must and global citizenship is in it's one of the hot topics and that is where work kitchen comes in he travels across every month he travels to a european country 
he next month he's going to the UK and the month after to Brussels. So he keeps traveling there and he teaches them internationalization. And I've invited him here also for a, a course in internationalization. So let's become global citizens. Grants Galore, Erasmus, Erasmus Plus project is the one we have written. There are so many other such uh, agencies where you can get amazing international grants once you hook, the, hook up with an university. So if we can do that, grants are there. So let's grab this great opportunity and the opportunity is for each one of you in this uh, hall gathered here. So thank you so much. I hand over to ma'am for the closing words. So the goal is we want to establish the Department of Internationalization. This was the inspiration which we got when we went there. Every university has a Department of Internationalization. So we, in the coming weeks, are going to start a Department of Internationalization. And this is an open invite to each one of you, those of you who are interested, to be part of this dream department, the Department of Internationalization. So let's forge formidable international partnership, partnerships. Let's... Uh, Let's have consistent international presence at BCMCH. So I was telling, if we had international students every month at BCMCH, every month if we had p people from each university walking the hallways of our hospital, how, how wonderful it would be. So, and let's, through that, establish global research platforms as well. So, tack for listening. Hey, that's thank you in Sweden. So I want to thank you and the entire management for giving us a chance to be there in Sweden and uh, to witness the beautiful uh, you know, culture there, learn so much and come back. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you. Grab the opportunity while it is still there. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Mini Ma'am and uh, Jacob Sir for that wonderful presentation, exciting and uh, inspiring us. I'm sure that all of you have many questions on this regard. And uh, as we are short of time, uh, you can always write to either Minimam or uh, Jacob sir, or, uh, or contact, the, contact our director's office and uh, George Andy sir for more information. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Abel. This whole trip was funded entirely by the university. So the, not only did they take care of them, the whole funding was done by them and students will come from there and we'll try and work out a system whereby our staff can visit them, our students can visit them. So this will be the next step. So all of you who are interested, and then as uh, Jacob and Minnie said, lots of money for projects. So if you write up interesting projects, then we'll, uh, we'll be funded very well. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>